Sir, unexpected ship detected. Whose ship is it? It appears to be a human ship, sir. Send standard human acknowledgement message number 4. I, Captain, sending standard human acknowledgement 4. A tense moment passes in the bridge before a small indicator light blinks on the comm panel. Message received, sir. Human ship reports all is good and wishes us well. The entire bridge crew released the breath they did not realize. They had been holding as the human ship drifted through the vast empty blackness of space. A mere million kilometers from their location. Harvesting output from the solar furnace that lighted. This star system, before it winked out in a sparking glimmer of white. Continue survey mission. Include the human ship in the report. I, Captain. Will do. Reginict watched the encounter silently. Along with 17 others, waiting for their transfer acceptance paperwork to be approved by the captain. The captain looked them over, cleared the paperwork in the comm panel, and dismissed them entirely. Reginic navigated the interior of the ship to report as ready for the next shift. The engineering leader to whom Reginic would soon be reporting was coming off duty, as Reginic approached. Sir, Reginic of the Matori Cluster, third generation of the name, reporting as an inbound transfer. Reginic was eyed over quite carefully, before the response came forth, very well. I shall begin your orientation at start of next shift. Do not be late. I won't. Sir, might I ask you a question? If it's related to your work shift it will be covered tomorrow. It's not, at least not directly. Fine, what is it? When we were on the bridge to have the captain approve our papers, there was an unexpected human ship. The older officer clipped a sharp intake of breathe, but not quickly enough to avoid detection. I presume there was no incident correct? What's the question? Why, sir? Why are we so afraid of them? Reginict of the Matori Cluster, third of your name. You will do well to never ask such questions again. But since the only way to learn the first time is to ask, I shall forgive you this one time. But why can't we ask? At the academy they just tell us the seven standard messages, and when to use each and to never, ever board a human vessel. Why? Look, rookie, there are many in the fleet who think the humans are unkillable. Shape-shifting demons, and they let their superstitions rule their rational mind. Fortunately, for you, I am not one of these individuals and so, I will answer you. But that's why, you don't talk about it. The superstitious lot think that even mentioning humans can summon them from the darkest reaches of space, and provoke them to attack. And our history of incidents with them has never gone well for us. No one has ever returned from a human ship. Not alive, not dead. Boarding a human ship is a death sentence. Moreover, every ship that has ever dared attack a human ship has in turn been boarded. Some say the humans are bulky monsters. That stand 300 centimeters tall, and cannot be stopped by any barrier set in their way. Others claim humans are only 175 to 200 centimeters tall. And are easily stopped. At first by basic doors some claim the humans are bipedal, and others claim they have a multitude of legs. Some claim that humans have only two arms, and others claim they have as many as six. How are all the stories so different? The humans destroy the records, so we cannot review them to see the truth. What? Any ship that attacks then is not entirely destroyed. It is left, crippled, floating in space with minimal power for life support, and left with the ability to call for aid. Only those who resist a human counter-attack are harmed, and they are slaughtered with a violence unknown anywhere else in the universe. What does that even mean? It means, kid, that if you are ever on a ship stupid enough to attack a human vessel, you had best find a corner to hide in, and not even remotely look like you're reaching for a weapon. The humans can handle ungodly high temperatures. We think they must be from an inner world of their home system and have evolved to handle such temperatures as their norm. That, and they have no interest in any world that suits our biology. But, because of this, when they board the very heat from their suits bakes or atmosphere around us. I've heard of opposition dying from heat exhaustion. Just from the waves of heat emanating from the humans long. Before combat range is closed enough to fight. That doesn't make sense. Why not just shoot them? Our weapons don't work on them. 
their suits are designed for much hotter environments that we can withstand, so our handheld energy beams can't come close to phasing them in the slightest. It would take industrial beam cutters to harm them, and we don't just have those kicking around. Really. That's what I've heard. But the humans have beams, and that can cut us down without a thought. They have beams that slag our interior bulkheads. And that's before they get into fighting range. Then they use axes and knives. They fight with a fury that is unmatched by any foe we have ever fought. They purge a ship of any resistance and then destroy the systems that could record anything about them and leave. But always, they tell the survivors to pass along the message to just leave them alone. So we leave them alone. We leave them alone. One day, perhaps, a human ship will be in need of assistance, and we will be able to provide it. One day we might be able to bridge the divide created from our first handful of encounters. Which had disastrous results at the hands of pirates who operated at the very edge of our known space. One day, we might get to explain to them, that those first few ships were not members of our military. And that the bad encounters, since were all misunderstandings. One day we might be able to stop fearing the humans. The author's name and the link to original text in the description. Consider tapping the thumbs up and pressing the subscribe button, if you enjoyed this video. And please join our channel.